Well, we've got the same last name, but I don't think we're cousins. But this guy is a fantastic author. And, uh, well, he was a quarterback, and he is a tremendous guy. West Monroe, Louisiana. That's the home of a man named Phil Robertson. And the headquarters of the Duck Commander Company, made famous by the TV series Duck Dynasty. Phil is now the host of a new TV series and the best-selling author of a new book. Take a look. When I first repainted... Best-selling author and Duck Dynasty star Phil Robertson says after years of political decay in our country, the American people are suffering and becoming more divided. In his book, Jesus Politics, Phil challenges people to use their talents, resources, and votes to reinstate biblical values and reclaim the soul of America. Hey, Phil's with us. Hey, this is Phil, you're a good author. I mean, I, I write a few books myself. I said, do you have a ghostwriter? Did you do it all yourself? It's a great book. Well, we have the book people send down the guy, and uh, I basically pontificate and expound <laughs> on what I'm, what I have on my mind, and he tape records what I say, and he takes notes. Well, that visit will end, and he'll come back, and we'll give him another six hours. So I meet with him about four or five times, and he sends me sort of the okay. first, first, yeah, first checking of it, and I look at it. And I'm like, close enough. <laughs> so that's the way we do it. Well, Bill, it's a terrific book. You know, but you, you, it said you came through looking at the Bible, and you found the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and that seemed to be the center of the kingdom. And so our politics doesn't reflect God's kingdom, does it? What's happened is, without us realizing it, we use terms like, we're going to church. Are y'all going to church today on Sunday? So we, the American model, we built structures, church buildings, and we say, let's go to church to worship. And then they walk out the door and let's see, there's 198 hours in a week. So, I mean, 168 hours in a week. Well, if you worship, about two on Sunday morning, and maybe you come back Sunday night for an hour, and maybe Wednesday night, that's the American model. Then you've worshiped God, and you're done with that. Well, that leaves you about 160 hours left in the week. So I'm trying to get people to realize that the church, they don't go to church. The members of the church Jesus being the head, the king of the kingdom, and we every day, including right now, you and I are glorifying God. We are offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. We are speaking about spiritual matters, namely the church, God's people, how to behave. That's all the time. So my work with books and Blaze TV and the podcast Unashamed, all I'm trying to do is get the gospel preached to the world around me because uh, my view of America right now, when you're looking at it, uh, I don't think it's a man-made political fix. I think it's a spiritual fix. Therefore, Jesus politics Whatever he said, do that. Look, here's the two groups if you line them up. Uh, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Here's what the Apostle Paul said. Top of the heap, sexual immorality. It's out of control in the United States of America. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord. Just look in our streets. Jealousy. You got it. I don't have it. I mean, you know, you fit, uh, you know you're a white supremacist. Fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, these various groups. Look, envy, you have it, I don't, it's not fair, you know. So that's one group. 
I warn you, as I did before, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the Apostle Paul said. But watch, I come along, and you and others like us, and we say, why don't we try this? Put our faith in Jesus, his death on a cross for us, his burial and resurrection. He's taken care of our sin problem, and he'll raise us from the dead, for crying out loud. And all we have to do is to love him and love our neighbor and bear fruit like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I'm saying we need to start with another narrative I don't put too much hope in, in government politics. I've been watching them. I'm 74 now. I'm thinking, you know, we, we have a spiritual problem, and our people in America have forgotten God. Our founding fathers, they made mistakes, but they, for the most part, they loved God, and they loved their neighbor, and they founded the greatest country on earth, and here we are running around and rioting and looting and shooting and at each other's throat. So I just think it's time for us to fulfill Romans chapter 12, offer our bodies as living sacrifices, vote godly, be godly, no swearing, no immorality, just do what's right when you get up in the morning. Uh, my brother, what could be wrong with loving God What's the downside and loving each other? What's the downside to that? <laughs> Phil, these politicians promised the moon. And how should we vote? I mean, do you believe most of what they tell you? Oh, are you kidding? I will <laughs> say this. Uh, this is good news. I've uh, had a one, one telephone conversation and two little meetings. So I met Donald Trump three times, mm. our president, all three times. It started with Jesus and it ended with Jesus. The first thing I showed him, I wrote it on a piece of paper, arrows, God becoming flesh. I told him about God becoming flesh, you know, the little virgin girl, Mary. And that gets him here. I said, by the way, I said, Trump, your calendar documents that. It's been 2,020 years since that happened. <laughs> all the years before Jesus are called all the years before Jesus <laughs> and all the years after Jesus. And we're down to 2020 A.D., year of our Lord. So I showed him that. He was like, hmm, because he asked me, so what is that? I wrote it on a piece of paper. I said, he died on a cross for the sins of the world. I said, Trump, you do. I didn't call him Mr. President. He was running for office. I didn't call him Mr. Sir. He's my age for crying out loud. I said, Trump, you do have sins. He said, oh, yeah. Well, I knew right then he was an honest man. I said, we all have sins, Trump. Look, Jesus died for him, my man. They put him in a tomb, and that's where you're headed. And so am I. We all are heading for a tomb. Physical death, it's a problem. I said, Jesus sobbed it when he was raised from the dead. I said, if you have a better story, well, lay it on me. Sins removed. We have the Spirit of God in us. We're guaranteed we'll be raised from the dead. We've been given life and immortality. He's the king. We're the kingdom. We act accordingly. I said, have a nice day. And I started to leave. And he said, hey, hey. He said, can I have that piece of paper? I said, you sure can. So next time I talked to him, I said, have they baptized you yet? He said, no, but I need to do that, don't I? I said, you need to do that. Move on it. So I'm just letting your audience know that Donald Trump has heard the gospel. I made sure I preached it to him because it's my job. So I just preached the gospel to him. And look, I felt better about him. And I've watched him. I'm voting for him, no doubt about it, and stack him up with the rest of this bunch. And it is pathetic what the Democrat <laughs> Party has turned into. Phil, <laughs> you're tremendous. And one thing I want to, you talk about the hypocrisy of these people who are complaining about burning fossil fuel and uh, they fly around in these jets and uh, they, they go to these conferences. 
Well, what is your answer to some of these um, you know, people who are talking about the Green New Deal? Uh, my answer is, I don't know why y'all are so concerned about, uh, oh, we better, we got to watch the creation because we got to take care of it because we're going to lose it and we're going to destroy it. Here's an interesting little read from Hebrews chapter one. So all you people trying to save the planet, listen up. Uh, in the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. So God made it. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. I'm in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment, they'll be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. The planet is winding down and winding down and you punch enough holes in it and you rob it, rave it, and this era is going to end. Peter said, how's it going to end? Here's the old apostle Peter for everybody who wants an update. Uh, <laughs> By water, the world of that time is deluded and destroyed, but the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire. He drowned them all one time, but eight. The next go around, he's going to burn it all up. <laughs> Being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly men. So God's going to destroy it. And look, but there's good news. Uh, we're looking forward to a new heaven, the saved, and a new earth the home of righteousness. He's going to just redo the whole thing and we'll be here forever. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Well, Phil, I'm excited about you, brother. You're terrific and we love you. And I, I, I'm running out of time, but I want you to know this is a great book. It's called Jesus Politics. Phil Robertson, wherever books are sold, uh, he's a great guy. This is well done. So, Phil, you're terrific. God bless you. Look in the kingdom, brother. In the kingdom. Look we're, at me. We're together. I'm a I haven't got one of those beards on yet. <laughs> I'll try that. You're great. God bless you, they Phil. They think I'm a homeless guy, but really I'm a priest of the Most High. <laughs> I'm the child of the Most High God. Yes, absolutely. A lot of common sense there. Amen.